Hey everybody, Chris Chang here. So a few months ago, Oakley had invited me to Southern California here to shoot my guns and uh, help provide them with some data for their new Tombstone eyewear product. Uh, I had a great time with the research and development team and Oakley has invited me back down uh, here at headquarters. If you haven't seen headquarters, it's a, it's a fantastic place. And so I'm gonna meet with the research and development team and we're gonna get some insight into all that data that I helped collect uh, with the eye tracker software. We're gonna dive into the data a little bit and get an understanding of how Oakley utilizes technology and data to develop not just the Tombstone product, but other products in the Oakley line. I'm really excited to go inside, so let's go in and check it out. Hey everybody, I'm here inside a, uh, a great conference room here at Oakley, here with Wayne and Joseph, who are here from Oakley's research and development team. We're going to talk about the eye tracker data that I had mentioned earlier in the video, and uh, we're going to talk about you know how Oakley you know applies technology and how you guys um, you know utilize all this data to make the uh, the next the next great thing. Um, so maybe as a, a good starting place, uh, do you want to explain quickly uh, the eye tracker um, uh, glasses here that I was wearing just uh, briefly, you know, how it yeah. works? This is an off-the-shelf eye tracker uh, made by a company called SMI. And this is a tool really utilized for research for the most part. Um, and, you know, relatively static environments, you know, maybe design uh, interiors of cars and used for market research. Um, for consumer shopping trends, things like that. And we utilize it in a little different way, and that was to um, design eyewear, specifically understand field of view. And so what exactly is uh, rigged up on the glasses here to help, you know, what kind of data is it yep. collecting and how is it collecting it? So the way the system works is there are two cameras that will actually track your people through a, an, an IR system, right? And then a forward-facing camera that will give you some type of video output uh, so you can understand where you're looking. Um, and on the back end, you get a bunch of data, and we turn that data into a uh, field of view plots over the top of a lens profile. Great. And uh, so, Joseph, do you want to uh, maybe bring up one of those examples to, uh, yeah, show us what we're, what we're looking at in terms of that overlay of uh, the data points and, and the video and, and what that looks like? Yeah, let's look at the Here we have you at the range. Um, We'll show a handgun to start. Sure. So yeah, it was interesting to you know see when I was you know loading the pistol, you see my eyes you know clearly on the magazine, um, which which is uh, yeah that, that that's good. Um, help explain to to us like what what happened where you know you couldn't fully see you know what I was shooting at. What what was going on there? Yeah, part of the dynamic with um, understanding field of view is really identifying use case scenario, right? So the reason Tombstone is so tall is we learn real quick that users are head down, eyes up. So in this case, with the eye tracker, this forward-facing camera doesn't have any articulation. So when your head is down and your eyes are up, the camera is basically facing down, essentially. However, the infrared cameras are tracking your pupil. So what we can show you next is... In just a sec. So when you say why they're so tall, you're talking about tall this way, right? Yes. This, this lens height. Yeah. And so what are, you what show are, us the plots, Joseph. The yeah, so far to show you to, uh, to do the handgun justice here, there's a plot. It shows you the two profiles. On the red, you're going to see Tombstone's profile. Um, excuse me, the white one is the Tombstone profile of the limbs. And then our military ballistic, we call M frame 3, is the red plot um, or profile. And then the data is the blue and the green of your eye being tracked in that use case. Interesting, interesting. And so explain uh, why is there the, uh, the M frame, frame there as, as a point of reference? What, what's, what's the value in, in that? Just to so that tells us where the data lies, where your eyes are tracking, and if you 
look at where the data is, it's, it's below the frame, the end of the frame. It tells us that that profile by design allows you the freedom to move your eyes where you need to be in that use case. So it's, it's relative, right? We don't know where to improve design unless we're, we have some type of reference, right? And so our in-frame products um, used in this, um, in shooting sports prior, um, have considered, been considered great field of view. Well, we've proven that we need some more. Mm -hmm. So this is just a point of reference. Great. You want to try shotgun? Yep, yeah. yeah, let's take a look at the shotgun data. That the tracking actually caught you when, when it caught there, right? When there was, yeah, there was a, 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 a misfeed of sorts. And when I was doing the analysis, we could see that your eyes stayed on the target, which I think by training you want your eyes to stay where the target is and your muscle memory comes in. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it's interesting. I mean, this is sort of uh, a good, <laughs> kind of a good training tool because um, you're, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a competition shooter. You know, I'm not a military or law enforcement. I mean, I'm not... Um, you know, necessarily trained to keep my eyes on, you know, a suspect or an enemy, but um, instinctually, you know, if I have a, a fire malfunction, I mean, I've done so many repetitions, I mean, I can clear my gun with my eyes closed, but it's, it was, it was good for me to see that, yeah, my eyes are still on target, and I just instinctively, you know, rack, you know, rack the bolt and, uh, you know, kept on going. So then your plots for rifle, or uh, uh, sorry, shotgun, um, look very different because it's a different position. So you're not in as high up in the, in the upper registry of the lens because you're more head up, more head up, more eyes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for shotgun shooters, it's typically, you know, the gun comes up to your yep. face, um, you know, impro well, improper form is, you know, bringing your face down to the gun. Yep. Uh, so that, that's, that's interesting to see there. And so what other kind of insights did you pull out of, um, out of the this, this shotgun data? Yeah, o overall, not just your data, but overall, um, the different disciplines, you know, prone positions seem to be worst case scenario because it's extreme eyes up. Um, you know, really taking into account where you live within the lens and then giving you enough um, gaze or field of vision when it comes to um, your natural cone of vision is key, right? If we found we lived all the way up to the top of the lens, then we don't really have enough for your cone of vision or your periphery. Mm -hmm. So take all that in consideration to make sure we give you enough lens everywhere you live in that space. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to look at a uh, rifle? Yeah, let's take a look there. And this was some interesting. <laughs> Interesting footage here. So in this video, it doesn't look like we're getting much because this forward-facing camera is just capturing your scope. Yeah, it's staring right into the end of the scope there. But, you know, the meat and potatoes are these IR cameras that are tracking your pupil. Right, so we're still getting the important data on the back end to understand where you're living in this. In and again, to make sure that my pupils can see, you know, through the lens and, and again, maximize that field of view, correct? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, we tried to give you uh, essentially an, an in-world experience with Tombstone. We want to make sure you're not losing the lens anywhere um, for, to give you the best experience and, and performance as well. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I notice about, you know, using the tombstones over the past few months is, I mean, the field of view is, is really great. And uh, I've, I've uh, used them for everything from three gun shooting to hunting uh, to, you know, trap, you know, uh, skeet and sporting clays. And, um, you know, especially having no, uh, you know, top part of the frame, like this is sort of a weak point I see with a lot of other, um, a lot of other shooting glasses, they have some sort of frame up top, and so right. you know, Point of interference. If, if you're, if you're, yeah, if you're, you know, yeah. shooting trap or skeet or hunting, and you're needing to look up, you have this bar that's sort of, you know, in the way of your field of view, and that, that's been a really nice, nice feature that I've enjoyed about Tombstone. Yeah. Good. 
Uh, so obviously, like I wasn't the only only person that you got, you know, feedback from. Um, you know, like you said, you know, getting data from other other types of shooters, and not only are other shooters in the same discipline, like three gun, right, different profiles, but you know, yeah. military, law enforcement, just like different environments. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what was that process look like, or I don't know any uh, I don't know interesting comments to to add. You know, we we just really had to focus on the bookends, the extremes with head and eye position, and I found personally that there were correlations between law enforcement and correlations between military, and they don't necessarily correlate to each other, but similar head and eye positions in law enforcement, similar head and eye positions in military, probably because of training, um, which really helps us. Um, find an average and correlate all that data. When everything's all over the map, it's a little more difficult. But we found we're able to group that data and you know find a solution. Cool. So it actually helped. And um, just to kind of recap for viewers, you know, what would you say? You know, what what was what was the the kind of the, the, the goal or the purpose around Tombstone? Like, how you know, where did the idea sort of start, and what were what were the goals? I mean, we've been talking a lot about field of view. Mm -hmm. Um, which is important, but like what what's sort of like that big picture of like what Tombstone's all about? You know, for us, we do our best work when we have problems to solve. And, and Tombstone, Tombstone came to us with uh, a few um, very well-defined problems. One of them was field of view, mm -hmm. right? And then we were able to attack that scientifically, which was great. Um, another problem was lens interchange, um, which historically has not been easy for, for consumers. And... The problem with lens interchange is you get your fingers all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I've right. had that happen to me plenty of times. Them and, or you know, it's it's clumsy, and you might break a frame, or people are concerned about breaking a frame or a lens or, or whatnot. So it, it allowed us to take a, a hard look at lens interchange and redesign the system. So now your lens will come with the lugs always attached, and all you have to do is remove the stem. Simple as that. Right. So and you just yeah. Grab you see where I'm grabbing the frame? I'm not touching the lens anywhere. Right. Yeah, which is, which yeah, I love this feature. You just hold the frames yeah. by the edges and then, you know, click click in and out, really fast processing. Yeah. So those three big problems for a shooting community, you know, field of view, uh, lens interchange ability, and the ability to maintain a, a clean lens was super important. Awesome. Uh, anything else that you guys want to want to add about? You know your experience doing R and D on Tombstone, or just your general R and D experience at Oakley for for the viewers. Yeah, for me, I was just shocked at how much you guys hit the target. <laughs> <laughs> I expected with how fast you shoot, you'd miss a lot, but you guys are really good. I'm just say, any thank you. Any uh, any insight into I don't know your experience being on the R and D team here? It's at just Oakley? incredible to see the discipline uh, in its in its highest level, and to be around those type of people that are really dedicated to that end. Uh, we won't match that, and we won't bring our product to their face. So it's been extraordinary. Good stuff. All righty. Well, hey, thank you so much, guys, for having me here. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're interested, uh, I'm going to show uh, a two- to three-minute video on Tombstone. Um, I'm in a little bit of the video, and uh, if you're interested in, in buying Tombstone or learning more about Tombstone, check out the links below. Thanks for watching. is a tough piece of product to interface with as a soldier. The bottom line is sunglasses can and will affect your vision. Oakley's gone through great lengths to correct those problems, patent those solutions, and use materials and processes that allow us to still maintain great optics as well as impact protection. Oakley's spent a lot of time correcting, perfecting geometries. We're taking all the technology and research and development that we've learned through advancing eyewear for special operations, and we're bringing it to other divisions to make better product. Tombstone is a unique look at field of view, unique look at lens interchange. What we're going to give you is a new experience. You now are behind a shield that will allow you to completely step in the environment. For the Army Marksmanship Unit, field of view, lens interchangeability, fit and comfort, those are the things that really matter to them. Field of view is critical. You need to be able to see your target spot on. For us, when we started chasing down, what it really meant for field of view was very subjective. We had to get a little more scientific. 
We're able to actually track your people, put users in that very specific environment, and we found that everyone really lived in the middle of the lens to the upper section field of view area of the lens. Another big consideration that we took from the shooting community was the ability to change lenses very easily. The lens exchange mechanism with Tombstone is almost reminiscent of the way you exchange a magazine into a weapon. It's really a single trigger that releases the lens, and then to push it back in, you just insert it into the well and it locks. Prism is a really hard look at separating color and understanding that environment. If we can separate color, then we're building contrast. If we can build contrast, then we're building depth perception. If we have better depth perception, we now have better performance. Being able to see your target very clearly and acquire targets very quickly is everything. And that's everything with shooting sports or whether you're in the military. If you can see your target clearly and acquire it and engage it in a very precise manner, you've got the advantage. Prism changes the way you see the world so that you can see things clearer with more accuracy so you can do your job well.